It's getting hot in the Arctic. It may still be the middle of winter, but the weather in the North Pole has gotten so warm it may as well be summer. Arctic sea ice typically develops a thick layer from late September to early March, with temperatures in the region normally below freezing. This year's Arctic winter, however, is unusually warm. Temperatures have risen to over 36 degrees above normal, and sea ice has started melting. A theory known as warm Arctic cold continents suggests that as the polar vortex becomes unstable, warm air is taken in and cold air expelled. The North Pole gets hotter as a result, while certain parts of Europe are subjected to unusually frigid weather. Though the theory itself remains debatable, the fact remains that whatever changes happen in the Arctic have a huge impact on the rest of the world. That's hot. Swarm of flying cockroaches descends on New York City. The summer weather always brings a buzz around New York. But this year's scorching hot temperatures are attracting more than just fun-loving humans. With 90-degree humidity cloaking the city, American cockroaches are spreading their wings. When the heat turns up, the cockroaches move around a lot more to keep cool. Moisture leaves their bodies and frees up a second pair of wings that typically aren't activated. The cockroaches don't actually fly, though. To put it more accurately, they glide, descending from above, one city block at a time. To the people on the ground below, it's hardly a welcome development. However it is that they are getting around, most New Yorkers still hate them all the same. Ah, the pitfalls of a city littered with refuse. South Asia faces a hot, humid, and deadly future. Climate change will make parts of South Asia too hot to live in by the end of the century, threatening the lives of millions of the world's poorest people. In 2015, more than 3,500 people were killed in heat waves in the region, but things are apparently going to get much, much worse. The authors of a new study say densely populated agricultural regions in South Asia will experience increases in heat and humidity that will make them uninhabitable by the year 2100. The scientists say if climate change continues on its current trajectory, heat waves will cause the wet bulb temperature to rise to deadly levels in parts of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. Wet bulb temperature is calculated by combining temperature, humidity, wind speed, sun angle, and cloud cover to measure heat stress in direct sunlight. According to the study, by the year 2100, 75% of South Asia's population would experience wet bulb temperatures higher than 31 degrees Celsius, which is dangerous for humans. In this scenario, 4% of the population would also experience deadly wet bulb temperatures exceeding 35 degrees. South Asia is home to one-fifth of the world's population and has high levels of poverty. Scientists say the poor will feel the brunt of rising temperatures because they lack access to air conditioning and other methods to beat the heat. They say cutting greenhouse gas emissions would help lower the impact of climate change on the poor. The hottest place on Earth. The U.S. Northeast may be experiencing record-breaking low temperatures, but in the land down under, Aussies are melting from the sweltering heat. Sydney became the hottest place on Earth on January 7th, with temperatures in the western suburb in Penrith reaching 47.3 degrees Celsius. It was a few degrees shy of breaking the record for hottest day in the area, a 47.8 degree temperature recorded in Richmond in 1939. The hot weather combined with strong winds increased bushfire occurrences, prompting certain areas to issue a total fire ban prohibiting open-air fires, welding, barbecues, and throwing lit cigarettes, among others. The heat caused higher than normal ozone levels, prompting a forecast of poor air quality, which could affect those with respiratory problems. Extreme temperatures also affected train track infrastructure and contributed to power outages, which affected roughly 3,000 properties throughout Sydney. The next few days are expected to be cooler compared to Sunday's scorcher, but still relatively hot. Middle East and North Africa soon to become uninhabitable. A group of researchers believes temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will rise dramatically over the course of the 21st century. The research suggests even if Earth's average temperature increases by 2 degrees Celsius, summer temperatures in the Middle East and North Africa will increase more than twice that. The temperature could rise to 46 degrees Celsius during daytime by mid-century, and it could be as high as 50 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. Also, heat waves could occur 10 times more often than now. The hottest period lasted for about 16 days on average between 1986 and 2005. 
However, these areas will experience 80 days of extreme heat per year by mid-century, and up to 118 days by the end of the century. The increasing air pollution caused by desert dust storms could make the environmental conditions intolerable, forcing people to migrate.